With the recent addition of the NSX GT500 to Gran Turismo 7, we're going to take the opportunity to look at the three main uh, GGTC cars in the game in the next three videos, starting with the NSX. The 2000 NSX GT500 stands as a pinnacle of Honda's engineering prowess and racing heritage. This high performance vehicle was developed for Japan's Super GT series formerly known as the All Japan Grand Touring Car Championship, which is the JGTC, where it competed in the top tier GT500 class. The NSX GT500 not only showcased Honda's technological advancements, but also demonstrated the, the company's commitment to motorsports excellence. The NSX GT500 traces its lineage to the road-going Honda NSX, a revolutionary sports car originally introduced in 1990. The original NSX was renowned for its lightweight aluminum construction, mid-engine layout, and remarkable handling. Building on this foundation, the GT500 variant was extensively modified to meet the rigorous demands of professional racing. Externally, the 2000 NSX GT500 featured aggressive aerodynamic modifications, including a wide body kit, large rear wing, and front splitter. These enhancements were crucial for improving downforce and stability at high speeds. The car's body was made predominantly of lightweight materials such as carbon fiber, reducing weight and enhancing the performance. Under the hood, the GT500 was a far cry from its road-going counterpart. It housed a highly tuned version of the C32B engine, a 3.2 liter V6 producing upwards of 500 horsepower. The engine was mated to a sequential gearbox enabling rapid and precise gear changes, essential for competitive racing. The suspension system was overhauled to include adjustable dampers and reinforced components, providing the necessary, necessary handling precision on demanding race circuits. The car also featured advanced braking systems with large ventilated discs and multi-piston calipers, ensuring optimal stopping power. The 2000 season was a landmark year for the NSX and the JGTC. Honda fielded several NSX GT500s through various teams. The cars quickly established themselves as formidable competitors thanks to their blend of speed, agility, and reliability. One of the standout performances of the 2000 season came from the Autobox Racing Team. They secured several podium finishes, showcasing the car's competitive edge against rivals like the Toyota Supra and Nissan Skyline GTR. The NSX GT500 incorporated several cutting edge technologies that were advanced for its time. One such innovation was the use of telemetry systems that allowed real-time data transmission from the car to the pit crew. This enabled teams to monitor the car's performance and make immediate strategic decisions during races. Additionally, the car's sophisticated aerodynamics were developed using extensive wind tunnel testing and computational fluid dynamics. These technologies ensured that every curve and surface of the NSX GT500 contributed to its overall aerodynamic efficiency and high speed stability. The success of the 2000 NSX solidified Honda's reputation in the GT500 class and contributed to the, the legacy of the NSX nameplate. The car's achievements on the racetrack demonstrated Honda's ability to compete at the highest levels of motorsport and help pave the way for future racing endeavors. Moreover, the technological advancements and engineering lessons learned from the NSX GT500 program influenced the development of subsequent Honda and Acura models, both on the track and on the road. The spirit of innovation and performance that defined the NSX continues to resonate in Honda's automotive philosophy. If you've made it this far, 
please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content, especially with the next two cars coming out in the following weeks. But let's go ahead and bring this thing over to Tokyo and see how it handles our test lap. The 2000 NSX GT500 is actually classified for the GT3 class with the other two cars hitting that same classification. Uh, it's a pleasure to drive, it's very predictable, and with the weight being to the rear of the NSX, it stays very well planted in the corners, which gives an advantage over the other two cars on the exits. Every advantage can also be a disadvantage, and I will say the NX NSX seems less inclined to rotate through the corners, which may slow you down a little bit. Fully built with the medium turbo, the NSX ends up with 779.55 performance points with the engine producing 773 horsepower and 515 foot-pounds of torque. The car comes in with a weight of 2,535 pounds and has about 56% of the weight going to the back end. With that weight being a little bit more rearward, it allows you to brake a little bit deeper into the corners, and you can actually brake a little bit while you're going through the corner, pushing more of that weight to the front end. Um, we ended up seeing about 5% of wear to the front tires and about 20% to the rears, and the NSX is the most fuel efficient of the three cars, getting about six laps with the setup on this track, and this was actually notice, noticeable in the new GT3 race, which uh, allowed the car to comfortably get through the halfway point and uh, not have to worry about messing with any kind of fuel maps during the race. So it is a, it's a very uh, noticeable advantage when you do take this out into the main races. We ended up crossing the line at 1 minute 53 seconds, 0 0.062 which put it uh, just behind the Viper GTS from 2002 and just in front of the engine swapped 4C. This is the most uh, fuel efficient and most affordable of the three cars so I do recommend picking it up while you can and next week we'll be taking a look at the Supra and the following week we'll take a look at the GTR to see how all three of them stack up against each other. Thank you so much for watching.